This is the Chrysalis Color Analysis Podcast. Your hosts are Christine Skamen of 12 Blueprints. And Jorun Harness of Nordic Simplicity. We are color analysts and we talk about how color can help you love the way you look. We aim for publishing a new episode roughly once a month, but the best way to make sure you don't miss out on an episode is to subscribe to Chrysalis Color Analysis on your preferred podcast app. Hello and welcome to episode 47, Neutral Combinations for Summers. We did a similar episode for autumns back in March, and so this will be the third in this series. The one that started it all was episode 43 for winters back in January, and um, there will be links to both of those in the show notes. Hi, everyone. Right. The original question was from a reader about elegant and understated looks for winter whose colors are more contrasting and maybe less varied in the wardrobe neutral choices. Basically, they got white, gray, and black, and she wondered what she could do with that compared with her true spring friend who was doing so much, and true spring will be the last in this series. I know. Well, it was such a good question, so we started a whole series, didn't we? Because we just couldn't couldn't just leave that hanging, could we? We kind of thought that the other seasons would want their episodes about neutral looks. And so this episode is for the summers. But don't worry, like Christine says, we will not forget springs. And we're going to devote a whole later episode to neutral looks for the three spring seasons. So summers. Let's begin with a fun fact about the colors for the three summer seasons. Summer colors have gray in them, but summer neutrals have color in them. Right, but it's the same colors appearing in both. The same tones or pigments carry over. So in the neutral blue grays, it's the same pigment as in the color color blue grays or blues, just less of it. Natural gradients appear by themselves. And... The way the pinkish taupes work seamlessly with the vintage rose reds, bougainvillea and geranium pinks. Um, and let's also talk about the superpower of summers, which I love. Their superpower is monochrome looks and the way those summer neutrals slide gradually over into summer colors, like you said. And you can create such lovely looks with it. I really agree. The transitions just become so gradual between neutrals or neutrals and colors. It's the most natural thing that happens. It's a special summer thing not to have these abrupt color shifts from item to item in an outfit. That said, you certainly can wear complementary colors, but it just doesn't tend to be sudden or bold. True. And nobody can wear monochrome outfits the way summers can and, and look so stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there can be other neutrals than dove gray and soft muted navy, which we all know are obvious favorites for summers. So and I'm, I'm back on talking about taupes, which I've only now managed to pronounce properly. Um, summers often feel that they have to use blue and navy. And I wouldn't say that they're overusing it because when something is so good looking, you can't really have too much of it, but perhaps they do want to change. Then taupe is great on its own. And, you know, it's a lovely complementary color with blue since taupe is their version of brown, the summer version of brown. And complementary colors give high color energy. So good to combine with both the blue-gray neutrals and the blue color colors. And as we're talking about this, we're looking at the taupe and blue neutral strips in the summer color fans. The bordering on colors, any combination of light, medium, dark, they're so beautiful. They really, really are. And, and I think something summers can forget to which I would say is also one of their superpowers is 
that those grayish colors, whether they're neutrals or colors, look really quite colorful. They they really don't look like they're wearing gray. If they want to look like they're wearing gray, they could wear winter neutrals, but they, they really look still quite colorful in their neutrals. And in whichever ca calendar months summer happens around you, could be January, July, wherever you live, colors decided by the quality of light. It's determined by the angle of the sun and the color of the wavelengths reaching earth, bluer in summer. And light's affected by temperature, temperature too. There's more water in the air when it's warmer and it kind of scatters light like little tiny mirrors and creates this haziness that softens edges. Yes, and that's why colors are cool. If you shine blue light on something, it looks cooler. And these summer seasons have a haziness in all of their colors. They do very much so. It's not three-dimensional like we talked about in autumn. It's a very different kind of softening effect. Two words for me that always come to mind for summer colors. And I think about, okay, what world are we working in here? What are we working with? And also, what do we not want to forget? Our peace and grace. But to understand color, you need context. I, I found it easier in the beginning to work from images rather than the palettes because a dot of color it doesn't say very much. The whole palette, sure, it gives you a lot more information. Shout out to the new NDU colors palettes we introduced in the last, last episode, but still very technical. And I actually needed something extra in stores where the mental picture was relatable. I could visualize the colors apart and together wherever I was. I could make outfits that walk around in the regular world. Honestly, I think looking back, I found working with only the palette came later. Standing in a store, it was just easier to imagine outfits like colors and scenes. You know, could this color belong in a rainbow, a spice market, a cottage garden, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I love your book. Um, I remember the first time I read your book, I found the landscape's images so wonderful that you described them so vividly for each season and they really made me understand and imagine the essence of the seasons yes the essence of the seasons and they for me they help me more with some colors than others I'm working on a YouTube video about purple at the moment and I've realized that purple was not something I could easily access from landscapes. I just think it's a complicated color to understand. And to this day I don't buy purple without having the palette in my hand. What about you Yorin? Did landscape images help you? Do they still help you know what colors to buy? Yes, I I think they do in a way. I I do picture them sometimes. Um I can conjure an image when I'm shopping. Imagine, you know, if an item is fitting into the landscape that describes the season. I think it helps. It's kind of like, is this cool color belonging in a crisp, clear winter landscape? Or would it slide right into an image of a misty forest of the summer landscape? That kind of imaging helps when shopping. Sure, it does. Uh, but... um. We're on landscapes, and I, you know you do it so well. Come on, take me a summer <laughs> landscape, Christine. A summer landscape? I would be happy to. I kind of have my go-tos at this point, and, and I totally agree. You need a few ways to think about color when you're shopping, and landscapes are one of them. A summer landscape. Okay, summer's a lake. Picture it right now. You're on a gray pebbled shore. You can feel the cool air. It's touching your skin. You can feel those little pebbles under your feet. Out in front of you, there's a natural wood dock. It's not painted. It's gray-brown, stretching out ahead of you. The water and the sky, they're a similar blue-green. It's hard to see the horizon line. There's haze on the water, so the edges are soft, edges of shapes. The image might not be sunlit, but overall, it's medium light. This isn't a shaded or a dark or a cold world. Water's hazy. You don't see the bottom. You don't see much past the surface, and it might be silvery blue or blue-green. The water's still, and you can see the forest reflected in the, on the sides of the lake. It is not a perfect mirror. The edges of the shapes are soft, soft and they shimmer a little bit when the water moves. Kind of how you feel sitting on the dock. That's the image for this episode, and it's that peace and grace that we want to recreate in outfits. 
so wonderful. I I can feel my my feet going into the cool water sitting on the edge of that yeah. dock. <laughs> yes, very cooling and, and lovely. It was, and you described it so beautifully. And um, actually, something like that is the image that we chose for this episode. And there's a soft white halo around objects. And you can see it in the bushes in the image as light comes through the bushes so that the outer leaves are hazy and lit. Um, and at the furthest point, you have clouds over the mountain that they seem to be kind of be fluffing down into the valley mist over the mountains. Not crisp, not at all. It's the same as the reflections of the trees in the lake. They're not crisp, not a sharp, wintry, rocky mountain lake. Yeah, I find that a perfect image to illustrate the magic of the summer seasons, complete with feet in water on the <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> so uh, in previous episodes, we've been playing with the, that game that you and I like to, to do. We're setting the scene. Shall we do that now? You know, how persons of each of the three summer seasons own the room. And perhaps also we should mention what kind of challenges we need to be mindful of in order to make an entrance as a summer, to not en end up looking bland or to not limit the full range of neutrals. You mean to not give a gray on gray impression? Yeah, yes, exactly. And another challenge, if you want to be professional or perhaps dramatic, you know, to not do it in a winter way. So keeping those challenges in mind, go, Christine. Uh, the challenges, I, I often find when I think about summers and their neutrals, a couple of things. One is that they could look a little more colorful. Uh, as I said before, when they wear their neutrals, they the colors can look fairly colorful. They don't look gray, but sometimes the choices could even have more pigment in them and still qualify as neutrals. It's like they're wearing neutral tones that are a bit grayer than they need to be, and the effect is kind of functional. It's not doesn't have the fresh, inspired effect that might be possible. So at one point, it is possible to be too soft. It's good to pick neutrals that are colorful enough. And I walk by a lot of fabrics in stores. They're soft for sure, but they got no energy with the palette. Even soft summer colors look intense with these really great fabrics, kind of like the palette is hovering above them. When you lay the palette on the fabric, the effect should be relatively flat. Like they literally locked together. They become part of the same puzzle lying on the same table. Analysts, often they have neutral tones in additional drapes or fabric pieces, show you how to get started, or you can buy kits to help you get started, or you will be able to once I find a new location and replenish the stock. <laughs> Our mission from the viewer for this series was elegant and understated. Well, with summer, it's kind of automatic. I mean, we had to think about it, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, you think you think it would be harder with winter because they had fewer neutral choices, but it kind of wasn't. Here, we almost have too much choice. Did you feel that way? <laughs> well, maybe not exactly that way, but there are so many varieties with summer. There are so many versions of neutral. And so then again, we're back to that blending seamlessly. That the seamless is the kind of a word I love to use with summers. Seamless and sophistication. In the same sentence, <laughs> sophistication, it's yummy. So I have a question for you. Do you think summer could look messy or too complicated in too many neutrals? I cannot bring up an image where I see that. It's funny, you know, I was thinking about what I just said. With winter, we had no trouble at all. And maybe it's the difference between looking at the few colors of winter neutrals and saying, okay, what question are you asking? You know, how are we going to make this happen? And then your brain starts to think about how you're going to make it happen. Well, with summer, you, the question is like, well, how are we not going to make it happen? Well, <laughs> it's, it's right there. There are so many choices, but I, we do truly um, understand the challenges, believe me. And uh, so whether it's two or eight neutrals, 
These looks seem fine to me. I do not perceive cluttered. I do perceive seamless sophistication. Some people might add more accessories and then, okay, maybe it can get cluttered depending on the person, but soft color, it just allows for so much complexity in what you can build. This is not a black and white world. You could have palettes with 40,000 colors if you wanted, because you, you can insert almost endless steps between the colors. True. So very, very well put, you know, allow, it allows for so much complexity. And summers can throw together outfits with so many gradations and look fabulous. Um, like springs can put together many different colors and look fabulous. Yeah, maybe that's why we had a bit of trouble when we started talking about this episode. We were like, what are we going to talk about? Some yeah. don't have a problem with neutral. Right. <laughs> it just seems so easy. Natural, lucky them. Anyway, but keep in mind that it was the summer who asked the original question that sparked this series of episodes about neutrals. It's a classic case of don't fix it if it's not broken. Uh, which, by the way, sounds much better when delivered in an American or Canadian accent. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. You could say, don't fix it if it ain't broken. That there you up. go. <laughs> right. Indeed, indeed. Okay, question back to you. Do you find when summers wear their neutrals, they're wearing a next door season's neutrals, like true summer is wearing soft summer, light summer is wearing true summer? Well... If they're wearing all neutral outfits, it would look similar to neighboring seasons because these are nuances of the same neutrals. Something worth noting anyway, because they're, well, their neutrals are very close together and maybe it's in the color colors, accessories and jewelry where you really play up your particular season. Yeah, maybe just one of, one of those other things to be mindful of. I ask because I kind of do find that often they are dressing for a neighbor, a neighbor's look. But as I think about what you said, the neutrals really are similar between the three. Same with winter, actually. And maybe what's happening is that I find they're often going too dark. So that's the second thing to keep in mind, besides not going too soft, stay in your value range, your light to dark range, because a light summer dressed in true summer neutrals it can be a bit lacking in energy. But often what I notice is the body looks too dark for the head. True summer often chooses soft summer colors as neutrals. And again, the body looks darker than the head. Hmm. I see your point. But I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's because the soft summer neutrals are warmer than true summer, that they can look dowdy and not fresh when borrowing neutrals from soft summer. Because true summer does have some dark neutrals in their palette. They do. Perhaps the takeaway can be to stay in your darkness range and borrow now and again from other summers because they share so much, but not, you know, to do the whole outfit and as we say again and again at least I do it is safer to borrow from your mother season than from any other season so soft summer and light summer are better off borrowing from true summer than vice versa and the closer to the face the closer you should be to your own season since we're talking about all neutrals the color next to the face will be neutral agree all right, let's start with true summer. Could I ask you to just put together a combination you find gorgeous? Okay, a combination of colors, gorgeous colors for true summer. I would choose the pinkish gray mauve taupe and um, combine it with a lovely hazy blue gray. That's not too dark. At least don't, don't do both of them too dark. Darker pink taupe is lovely with the light sea foam and um, summer white perhaps in a blouse or sweater top. Interesting. I love pink and blue on True Summer. I find it gorgeous and adult. And I notice you have chosen pink, taupe and blue gray as the neutral combination that you love. 
Yes, I did. I find it very elegant and sophisticated. And like you, I find that True Summer Pink's very grown up and not girly or childlike at all. Anyway, so my NDU colors package with the new and posters has arrived and I've been studying them, starting to take a look. And those are the ones that I'm looking at right now while while we're talking. So, Christine, uh, I really want us to play that game that we played before. True Summer enters the room. Let's play the game. What is she wearing? Not just colors, but let's put some clothes on her. Sure. And I will try to stay on track. Do you ever notice you asked me a question? <laughs> I'm immediately answering a different question. Yes, so I am. <laughs> You're like a politician. It's like, oh, I'm so glad you asked. Here is the question I would like to answer. That's right. I will answer what, <laughs> it's not even what you should have asked. It's just for some reason I'm, I'm not. It's on. okay, Christine. It's just the way it okay, is. Okay, but back yes. on track. Okay, okay. Going through summer, enters the room, what's she wearing? Okay, my preference in this amazing outfit of neutrals for each woman. There's white somewhere near the face. I know it's hard to maintain. It is a pain, but gosh, it looks so good. I manage white, you know, you got to compromise. I wear V-necks, gets less makeup on it. Could be a loose scarf, jacket, elements in prints. Our listeners probably have their own workarounds. And for summers, there are quite a few whites or similar qualifiers, similar colors that could be um, true summer white. Because soft colors, again, allow for so, so many steps between colors. And that would, you could choose all kinds of them to put in the palette, although probably that one's a little bit more technically precise. But in fabrics, it doesn't have to be that exact. And it will still work just fine. Whereas with brighter colors, you know, that high saturation, it's either in or out. Meaning white has many variations. There could be probably five in soft summer alone. And if not, not white, that's fine. One of the cooler uh, light beiges, I think of the colors as of pale, cool sand. Fabric with a subtle silver shimmer. Subtle, like you only see the sheen when she moves. Gosh, that just makes everything better. Yes, and... Uh... I'm sure that our listeners have noticed that we're still not talking about outfits. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I do think uh, this is a good time Just to stay to after me. We'll get there. Yes, I'm, I'm not let me get no, away with that. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's digress further. I think this is a good time to make a point of the difference between matching and harmonizing with our fans when deciding to keep or buy a garment. You know, in each of the season color fans, there's one white and it might not even look white. And when we say harmonize, not match, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, everybody knows what matching is. That's when you see that a fabric looks exactly like the one of the squares on the fan. Yay, yippee, we have a match. But there are more colors than that which are workable in your season. So let's see if we can explain how to do that and and you did a little bit of that earlier christine when you said uh, about the fan seeming like mm. it lies flat and and uh, locks in so instead of matching fabric exactly to one of the squares put the fan on the fabric and see if the fan feels at home or locks in or looks flat does the fan kind of settle comfortably into the color or does it kind of float over it uncomfortably different? If the fabric makes the color fan look like it's made of plastic or if the fan turns dusty or turns to oatmeal, then there's no harmony. So we're looking for colors that have a natural connection or feel like an extension of the fan. Yep, that is what we're looking for. And if you're just looking at the white strip, Put it on there and make sure that go, let your eyes settle on every single color and see if every color in the strip could make a plausible outfit and the whole strip stays flat looking. If it starts looking like thing, the dots, the squares are bouncing up and down, one summer higher, summer lower, uh, possibly issues. And so, right, if the white looks dish, dingy with the fan, well, it's going to do the same with you. Put a summer palette white on a winter color, 
And the swatch maybe looks the white becomes a little dishwater. It loses its freshness. And the fabric, that winter white fabric, it looks jarring or neon. It's like blinding. Um, whereas the palette colors, the summer palette colors are going to fade. So like the ink is printed thin on the canvas. Move the palette to a summer white fabric, clean laundry white. It's gorgeous. That fan, it's just your face. And we realize you don't have to own different season fans, although the NDU color fans, boy, they've give you, given you a lot of very good solutions for that situation. Um I'm always also looking for ways to repeat the natural coloring in ways that are subtle. I mean, yeah, you can have blue eyes and wear a blue shirt. Everybody gets it, but that's the thing, right? Everybody really gets it. <laughs> and so, for example, how the medium and dark pink taupe can bring out those pinkish tones in the hair. I think that's absolutely fabulous because summers do kind of have pink in their hair. And I love how eye colors can be in the neutrals. I mean, that can happen in any season, but I see it in summer often. Gray green or gray khaki. One example, slightly unusual eye color. And I would play that up by figuring out the neutrals in the eye. And I'd own a lot of them. In, uh, in other true summers, the eye color can look very bright, like turquoise lake, let's say. And if you were going to guess which of the 12 palettes the, your eye color appears, you might choose a very bright season. Clothing colors from those palettes, though, they take over. And so the eyes might jump, but the facial colors are drained. But boy, when you wear true summer colors, my goodness, it's good. Yes. So write this down, everybody. If you find your eye color in the neutral strips, use it. Repeat it in clothing. It makes the eyes pop. Now, Christine, you're being a little bit <laughs> evasive today. Can we get back to outfits? Crack that whip you're in. <laughs> okay. Whip, that's whip. Boy, oh boy. Okay, white. So what kind of white? Let's. She's wearing a white jean jacket and it has silver snaps. Ah, oh, yes. Now we're talking. And then she has a soft sweater in that powdered mauve taupe. Yep. Okay. So now she needs something a little darker. And this applies to all natural coloring in, in true summer, whatever your hair color is, eye color. I'm very, very partial to their darker mauve brown as a trouser pant. Let's say it's ankle length. And of course, I got to add detail. I also do love their thundercloud gray if they were out of dark mauve brown in the store. <laughs> or you live in rural Norway and can't find it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I'm with you on the brown in pants as a continuation of the mauve in the sweater or a flirty skirt in blue-gray and blue-gray flat sandals if the weather's warm. Yep. It's limitless, isn't it? Okay, let's give her jewelry. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Silver hoops, not too tiny, because they can get kind of more dainty than they need to in jewelry. Maybe there's a twist in the metal. There's a dangling pearl. I'm trying to get that halo effect from the image into this outfit. And gosh, they're just beautiful with a little silver glow somewhere. They really do reflect uh, light, kind of like moonlight. They often wear matte textures, and that's not wrong at all. But low-key silver shine, also really good. Yes, I'm intrigued by that halo effect, that moonlight thing you mentioned. You could recreate that with a transparent chiffon scarf in lighter neutrals. doesn't have to be white, but could, yeah. Yeah, that's right. A anything that just lets light move through it. Mm -hmm. So, digressing as is my specialty. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> We're just all going to have to get along with that. Um, I prefer eyeshadow neutrals to me grays I look at those uh, strips in the palettes and I think about eyeshadow and I prefer eyeshadow from the neutral strips lipstick and blush from the reds not the neutrals would you agree with that oh yes definitely I I would never use neutrals as a guideline for lipstick well maybe maybe in autumn Maybe Autumns could use a neutral, one of their neutrals in a lipstick color. Yeah, 
I think so too. Some of those darker burgundy browns. Mm. I've been thinking about this lately because we see so many beige lips and I know you and I talk about them and I know we don't love them. And maybe because the beige is not a color the woman would wear anyhow, but it just doesn't add any energy to the face when the lips are the same color as the skin. And so we were talking about the gradients you can make with rose brown to rose taupe. And I did a Met Gala video recently. The last image was Anita, woman of color, Brazilian, I think, light medium to medium skin tone. And we see this way of wearing lipstick on a lot of deeper skin tones. I have to say it is neutrals and I think it is gorgeous. The lip is outlined. Can you picture this? The lip is outlined in a darker flesh tone, brown, maybe violet something like that, a uh, color that might be neutral if she wore it in clothing. I'd have to see that. Um, has a fair bit of gray in it. The color then gradients through a medium mauve gray plum, kind of like those soft gray pinks you were describing, and then to a yet lighter pink in the center. It's also nice when it's shiny or a little frosted. Really lovely on women of deeper pigmentation any depth skin tone, any lip shape, whereas on lighter skin tones, I actually think I prefer color colors for the lips. And it's important to you for both to use their season neutrals, I would think. You need the warmth level and the darkness range to be right as you choose these gradients of lip colors or be very close to hers. Could you picture that lip color yarn? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. When, when you say it, I can picture it and it doesn't sound bland or pudding-ish as to me it would be on lighter skin maybe since the skin has more melanin and deeper color on its own it can handle it um i if you don't mind i'd like to go back to that white jeans jacket because we say white jeans jacket but bright white isn't quite right is it so let's Talk a little bit about what kind of white. There's a fair bit of white in the drapes, and I know that the the the, the white in the summer drapes looks whiter than the whites on these color fans, whether they are the TCI fans or these these new NDU color fans. Yes, it's, it's true. It is absolutely true. Honestly, if I were a true summer looking for white in a store, I would take a Kleenex because it's that soft kind of white it does have a little yellow in it but it's that that level of little bit of gray about drapes looking sometimes whiter or different from the color in the palettes and it doesn't have to be white could be any of them happens easily with palettes from different color systems let's say other than the one that made the drapes also when they're the same color system can be a few things when I choose those whites for the drapes what's in my mind first is what is available to me in stores and which of my choices then formed really good harmony with the palette? I'm not thinking, is it identical, drape and palette? Because it just doesn't need to be. Those test drapes, they're doing a job, which is not to be clothing. It's to be part of a consistent elimination process. So really what the true summer white needs to be is not winter <laughs> and not spring and not autumn. There's got to be a distinct uh, step up or down when the seasons match or are the same or are not the same. And their job changes wherever they appear in the testing process. If you've had a live color analysis experience, you know the analyst is comparing certain colors in a very specific order. And yeah, soft summer, you could have four or five, six white contenders and they'd work just fine. When I started, a lot of years ago, it was 2009, I had the exact same drape in a couple of seasons, three seasons for some of the luxury sets. We don't do that today, but I learned what the priorities were and what the very brilliant creator was seeing. What was she doing? And I'm still a believer in owning a few palettes from different creators. I have maybe five dark winters and I look at them all now and again because you just understand better what what they share, what they mean, what the priorities are. It's like you understand blueberry muffins better if you try one from five different cooks. Oh yeah, okay, I get what we're doing here. Or you listen to the same movie score by five conductors. Oh yeah, okay, I see what, what it is that matters. And you know, there's a limit to how many 
versions of each color needs to be in the palettes, like a story with too much detail. The other thing that really matters to me is functionality. I want you to go into stores and come up with better stuff. <laughs> and if you are getting lost in detail, which may be what's happening here with my explanations, uh, it, it's, it, people aren't sure what, to, what information matters here. White just doesn't have a lot of pigment. So yeah, you could put 10 in each season with a tiny little bit more pigment this way and that way. But is this useful? Not to me. If I were making a palette and I was adding more something, I'd pick color colors over neutrals and teach people how to use the full palette to, to choose whites that are going to work just fine. Like you can try to decipher 10 different whites from a one inch square swatch in a palette. But at the end of the day, just pick one that works with the palette. You know, I remember <laughs> showing my... Um, friend at the time, I had five different paints of white for a wall. And this person looked at them and said, are these different? Like a, de a decorator can maybe see, picture the wall in each color. But most of us, we're just trying to get out the door with a good white blouse, make the leap from a swatch of white to a full-size garment. Well, the color sometimes appears to change. Same with a swatch to a full-size drape. The color can appear to change. The bigger the color, the brighter it can sometimes look. Just learn to choose harmonious white. And um, so, yeah, how do the other colors look with it? Rather than getting caught up in the exact swatch color. One more thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to stop, Yara. And I know you're <laughs> like, just stop it. Um, an example with pink. I just added a bunch of true summer pinks to the Pinterest board. Put the link in the show notes. From Debenhams and John Lewis, a reader in the UK, asked about that from the last YouTube video about pink. And none of them are likely identical to any palette. And yet they're all good contenders for the season for palettes and even for drapes, depending on what they're being compared to at that point in a testing system. The palette designer just, they gotta pick one. Um, okay, Yaren, sorry, always the long answer with me. Help me make this practical for our listeners. <laughs> yes. The Norwegian, uh, bring me up, bring out that Norwegian. <laughs> Yes. <clears throat> All right. I am Norwegian. Yeah. I am asking. So let's make it super practical. This woman, she's in a store. She's looking at a blouse. And the blouse is lighter than the lightest patch on the fan. How does she decide about the blouse? Hide the white strip. There you go. <laughs> you see, you saved me. You saved us all. How does the, the blouse, this white contender blouse, work with all the other colors? Yay! That's not matching. That's harmonizing. Yeah. The ideal white for true summer, yes, it is a bit gray. And yes, it is a trace of very cool yellow because it is summer, meaning that colors are soft and neutrals have some pigment in them. And white is one of them. It's going to have the same qualities. Okay, I have a question for you. I know we will get back to outfits, but I have a question for you because if, if anybody doesn't know it yet, they they know it by now. You're a simplifier by nature. I'm a multiplier by nature, right? And I often hear people say they're looking for their white, their red, their signature, whatever, dark brown. And I, I just don't operate that way. I, I look for as many good operating functional choices as possible. Are you someone who kind of isolates if I could have my red, my white, my navy? Do you do that? I I am. Um, I'm happy with just one or two versions. I, I do not go out. I know you have this fun project. You want to own something in every single color in your palette. Yeah, and yes. I'm just the opposite. I'm thinking how few things can I get away with and still look decent and that's that's my way and there's nothing wrong with either extreme i there mean we, you can use that. your fan to multiply and to to own lots and lots of different colors and enjoy all of them and the fan is an excellent tool to zone in on your few favorites and, and use them yeah i mean you, you just got to be okay with what you want you want what you want you don't have to it's yes, and accept about. accept that that's who I am. This is this, mm -hmm. this is me. I'm the simplifier. You're the multiplier. And maybe that's why we work so well together on this podcast because we bring different things to the to the table. Well, to the it's microphone. funny. And the more I try to simplify it, the more complicated I make it. 
And I'm, I'm now thinking, God, you're actually the opposite. The more I try to complicate it, the more you keep dragging me back to, yeah, but what are we talking about here? Okay, carry yes. on, carry on. Yes, but it's useful. It's useful for me to 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 sometimes be forced to think of, you know, how could I make this more complex? Indeed. Yes, so, thank you for being so gracious about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my pleasure, dear. <laughs> anyway, so, Christine, question for you. Mm -hmm. When do you see summer neutral outfits becoming too bland? Oh, I know that. The lightest with the lightest with the lightest. They're, they're not using their full range at all. It's a bit powdery or somehow um, unexciting, combining more light levels. And I, of course, as we just said, I, I buy all kinds of neutrals and I just assemble outfits with the whole range. And that's what a summer could do. Buy as many as you want to own, but don't keep buying the same darkness level. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and darker and lighter neutrals together to use your whole range. Or what I like also very much is a pop of texture instead of a pop of color. So an outfit of three, ne three neutrals close together, kind of a near monochromatic look, which is good. But then you add a belt in patent shiny leather with a shiny big buckle or a faux fur vest on top of it in the same neutral family, but a totally different texture. I really see that. It adds just the right amount of energy without really looking particularly overthought or worked at. Pearls and a soft sweater, suede with silk and leather. It can be found in great colors with some of the best true summer whites I've ever seen, actually. Hmm. Well, that's a general point, the one with about the pop of texture. It's a general point, not only for true summer, it can be for anybody. Okay, moving right along, let's go for something for the light summers. A smashing outfit for light summers. Let's make it a cold weather outfit this time, because the light seasons often find it hard to find cold weather outfits in their season's colors. You know, light summer is, it, it is more pigmented, more saturated than true summer, but that's not really what I notice about it. Um, what I notice is it is warmer. The neutrals are warmer. The blues are greener. Browns and whites are yellower. I also no, notice that light summer doesn't go as dark as true summer. They have a tighter light to dark range. Light summer white, too, depends where you live, but I think you can really find that color quite easily in many items. And so what would I love? A white coat. I really like white coats. A pea coat or a wool coat. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And then bring in, um, for instance, like that seafoam blue-gray um, in a, something, her handbag or boots, Perhaps they might be seagull wing, you know, that dark, lovely gray, seagull wing gray, or it's one of those darker blue grays. And it still has visible blue in it. Yeah, it really does. Okay, now option to add something from the brown neutral strip. Those pink sandy beige colors, I think, you know, soft summers are good at wearing those. True summers and light summers, honestly, I think they could hunt up for those a little bit more intensely I don't see it as often as I would love to also the lighter seafoam gray I, I'd love to see light summers actually wearing more of their browns they just look fabulously good and they're really interesting too okay question for you Yaren I enjoy overall light looks on some on light seasons staying within their light to dark range always meaning pastels do not go very light in the colors but white is inherently lighter do you think a white coat or jacket with white pants outfit, too light overall? I mean, they're not high contrast people often. And you could add a dark neutral or maybe medium. But do you think white with white, two large items, is that too light? Well, not if you mix in one of the one or more of the medium neutrals. And and their medium neutrals would read plenty dark enough against the white. 
I was just going to ask you that. Is a medium neutral dark enough? And I think absolutely yes. Like mm -hmm. I said, they're, they can wear more contrast choosing darker neutrals, but they don't have to. Sandy beige, pink beige tones, it's really just amazing. And they really give the white so much meaning and beauty. Yes, but it depends on the person too. If the hair is darker, I've seen some light summer persons with relatively darker hair. Mm -hmm. um, the hair would act as their natural dark contrast. And that would give more energy. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, well, and, and a, a, a white outfit, would need something but if the hair was long and relatively dark that would be mm -hmm. something i think so i mean at the end of the day you do got to look at yourself it's you know kind of like the turquoise eyes to the gray green eyes in true summer but yeah i agree with you um another question as a light summer is all neutrals bland to you i ask because she's got brightness this summer with a, that spring in her is not having a color color missing anything no, because as you said, the neutrals have the brightness. There's that sunshine quality of spring washing over them. And, but you know, she's still a summer, so not overdoing it. Um, and it's also something very Scandinavian and European to use a lot of neutrals. It is sophisticated in a European kind of way. So, so of course, I would say that would be an option. Yeah, but I, I do agree with you. The neutrals have brightness and she is very much still a summer in how she looks. And for the people I've met also in how they prefer to present themselves. Um, and maybe it's just that gray on gray that we're trying to avoid on every season, actually. Mm, true. Yeah. And so long as light summer varies the darkness level, it's great like three grays in a row, they're, they're light summer grays. That would be interesting enough with enough uh, variation in lightness and darkness. And of course, they are summers. So monochromatic looks are great. Analogous too. That's beautiful. You could pick one color from all each of the three neutral strips. Yep. At the same darkness level, still gorgeous. Yep. Is this a good time to mention how to do dramatic looks with summer neutrals? Since this palette is inherently the less color dramatic, as in less bold or contrasting, and sometimes you want um, ways of creating drama or formality without using those traditional bold and contrasting ways of getting there. Mm. I think if you want to bring a little drama without leaving the neutrals, I think the analogous look that we talked about is a good example of how to do that. Pick one from each of the three strips, um, the three neutral strips. Gorgeous. It is. It adds enough movement, right? The idea is not to be a winter or yep. or spring or an autumn. And um, they have their own ways of using color well. And, and also just using the lightest with the darkest. That's automatic kind of formality. And the palettes provide these perfect boundaries. So you can have the high contrast without this pendulum going too far. You look great, plenty dramatic within your light summer palette. A question about colors that can act as neutrals because there's spring influence here. And I often like colors as neutrals. We talked about that a bit in autumn too. I really could see blue, medium to dark blue as a neutral. Blue jay blues with a silver shimmer or white scarf. Do you think that's oh, yes. a color or yes. that kind of blue could be neutral? I think it's it's perfectly fine to use that and call it a neutral or or jeans, you know, any the mm -hmm. jeans colors, a jeans jacket and clear blue. Super. And I would I would go right ahead and, and use that as a neutral for a light summer. Yeah, but if I, I agree, if I put all my neutrals out on my bed, there would be some of those softer blues there as well. Or, mm -hmm. or navy blues. And of course, I always need shine, probably in everybody. It's a personal thing. I don't, just don't know anyone who can't be elevated, say, or interest added with shine. And here for that summer halo and the spring sunshine, what, pearl, silver. I also really like twinkle, uh, crystals, little ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, being mindful that some of the sharper crystals could be too wintry for summer sophistication. I'm thinking, you know, um, they could be tiny and a cluster together that would give a softer... 
sprinkles kind of yeah i mean doesn't have to be completely delicate bubbles or like drops of water actually is a really good Ooh. one too or the the glass you know that murano mm. glass the the venetian glass yeah, it's just so nice to to look at whether it's a dangling earring or embedded into a hoop. I agree. Big crystals, they can be fun. Um, depends on the woman, you know, in the situation. But the rhythm of the way light moves across it can be too fast. And then it's distracting or maybe even demanding. But light summer, I mean, these people always have something cute or adorable. And a little bunch of grapes, a little magic stone dangling from a hoop. I really like it. Or if you don't like jewelry, many people don't. Um, a feature in a handbag, uh, silver in a hair accessories. Summers, you know, to me, they are often so much more glamorous just standing there than they allow themselves in their appearance choices. They like simplicity. And usually they don't choose the showy or the overstated, but they can kind of take it too far and appear a little cautious. When they're some of the most fun and funny people around and glamorous. You know, I mean, like they can get in their own way a little bit, as can we all. Is that fair to say? Do you, indeed, do you, indeed. Just, it's just too much conservative, too much careful. <laughs> um, okay. If you're feeling ready, Yarin, let's look at lights at soft summer. I am ready. And with soft summer, I'm struck by the lovely darkness of the soft summer palette. I know you said that they shouldn't go too dark, but there is a surprising amount of rich darkness in those neutrals. There's a black alternative strip uh, for the soft summers in the NDU colors with aubergine, forest, and several others, and a gorgeous, gorgeous brown, dark brown. Yeah, that's a that is a truly great addition to to the palettes and yeah I, I think when I mean they shouldn't go dark I don't mean the overall look I mean they are summers you know and so use your contrast level use your natural coloring wear darks but add light or medium choices to the look it's, I just find it more interesting as well in some system palettes the lightest choices in both neutrals and colors can be noticeably lighter than others don't worry about it. Like if you own two and you think, well, wait now, these colors go much lighter than the others. Don't worry about it. There's lots of reasons for this. It's like with the whites. Neither one is wrong. The right decision, I believe, this is just me speaking for the client, is adapt the palette to you. So if you wear those lightest choices and you think, Man, this is just draining and washed out. It doesn't support or enhance my face at all. No worries. Skip down to the next level of darkness for larger items are near the face and those lightest items, well, they'll, they'll serve you in other ways. Elements in a print, a nice shadow highlight pants, because they do form harmony with the palette, with the rest of what you're wearing. Mm. So a soft summer outfit, let's start with the shoes. Um, how about white sneakers or white canvas shoes for the office and dark aubergine pants? pink taupe sweater that th those lighter taupes I like the way those look together and then well Ms. Uh, compli com com <laughs> you're not a complicator just unleash you know, me let me that. go <laughs> yeah. dear I'm multiplier what dear dear multiplier what shall we add to yeah. make it sizzle permission to add yeah <laughs> yeah okay. um yeah okay so we have yet to complete our spring episode. We did, however, complete autumn back in March. And um, and we did do winter back in January for some crazy reason. That might have just published a few days ago. I have no idea why the winter one, but anyway, we'll go with it. Spring is yet to come. Autumn was back in March. Important thing I mention here is because soft summer has an important contribution from autumn. And so it may be worth having a listen to that episode. Few ideas to carry over. One, the line between colors and neutrals is fine. It is porous, you could say, in that colors could almost be an extension of the neutral strips and vice versa. What you said earlier, Yorin, but it really applies here. I mean, it's true in all seasons, but here you just see that connection where colors have less pigment and neutrals have more, they, they kind of move into one another. So I think 
softest rose can qualify as a neutral. I'd see picking up a rose taupe with a soft rose that continues those same tones, maybe in a light, with a light and a dark or a matte and a shimmer. Texture really does matter, uh, particularly for autumn. But what you said before, Yor, and for everybody, it adds interest to outfits. Second thought we had back in the autumn episode is that concept of depth. And in autumn, it really comes across as three-dimensionality, which can be worn in various ways. Here in the early days of autumn, I see depth as distance. So what are we going to do with that? Well, colors are bluer in the distance. They're lighter and warmer, which often appears as brighter in the foreground. You don't have to overthink it. The colors and the mind of the viewer provide the meaning. You can see it in the image for this episode. Com so what I'm saying is combine um, cooler and warmer colors from your palette. They've got a big range in soft summer. Depth and texture too, it's coming in here. So waffle weave to velvet, both fabrics with depth, it's just absolute magic. Yoren, you told me about a friend who wore a crossbody bag, soft summer yellow, and how fantastic it looked. And to me, soft summer yellow, it like it's a lot of their, it's almost a neutral. It looks to me like um, lemon ginger tea. It's definitely not jelly bean yellow. True, true. I think of the soft summer yellow as straw. You know, those rolls, the balls of straw in the field. Mm -hmm. and, and I think of it as very close to neutral, but with a very, very, very fresh quality. It's it kind just of great slides thing. into these outfits, doesn't it? it, it it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about nature visuals that have been correlated with soft summer quite often by many people. The forest, for example. I got to tell you... I, Maybe this is where I like to simplify things. I would just be shameless and go get a scarf in a forest or a bark print. Mm -hmm. Those associations are already in our minds. It's a sort of like archetypes. It's something humans, for some reason, already know. Also, a Celtic knot. It's a familiar shape. We know it from herb gardens. And a lot of soft summer greens and browns are in herbs. Also, stone statues that could be worn in the shape of a dangling um, silver earring or pendant. Okay, let's keep going with her outfit. She's got white canvas shoes. She has aubergine pants and she has the lightest pink taupe top, blouse of some sort. Yeah, well, um, there's something about any summer using blue as a neutral. That's fabulous for shoes and handbags for soft summer. Um, so she, instead of the white canvas shoes, she could pair navy shoes or skirt with a warmer white kind of reminds me that white the soft summer white kind of does it that to you too it reminds you of tea with lots of milk and and uh, the color of natural raw silk very nice for a soft summer yeah it really it never reminds me of coffee ever but mm. yeah i do get tea sometimes some of those neutrals Mm, it's, they can get closer to soft autumn than one might think, but we're not talking about that here. Um, what was I going to say? The other thing about soft navy blue shoes and um, purses and things like that, you can find it. I don't know what Norway is like, but you definitely can find dusty blue in shoes. Yep, yep. Just and bags. You, you can? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make it, you know, so why not work with it? I also love the darkest gray brown for soft summer, like a dark bark brown. And what's so cool is when they wear it, when you see it in a full size garment, it actually looks more brown than gray. Mm. The, the color surf softness in the person and the gray, they kind of like equalize each other. And then the color is the thing you notice. It is excellent. Put it in tall boots or put a sweater near the hair with a necklace dark silver, let's say, or a, a place to maybe sneak in a little bit of color as maybe amethyst. You sneak in a little color. And, you know, this is a good time to say that you don't have to stay in the neutral strips and outfits. Neutrals are there to make colors better. So to repeat, please understand that Christine and I are not saying that people should have to wear all neutral outfits. That's not the point. It's not the only point of this episode series. It's a challenge series. 
It started with this question from the winter who wanted inspiration to make outfits with neutrals. And being who we are, we thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do a challenge like this for all the seasons? So these are episodes where we're challenging ourselves and you to think out of the box, which is always a good idea. That's what pushes us forward. So we're kind of ready to wrap up this episode. But before we go, I know that you, Christine, got a very interesting question from a reader, a person who said, what did she say exactly? Refresh my memory. Yeah. Yeah. To, to paraphrase, it was from a woman discovering herself to be a soft season after years of wearing high contrast and limited number of color blocks. And she said it well, how do you reduce contrast and create more composition, more tie in between colors in an outfit without adding all sorts of bits and pieces? Mm. Right. So how to create a cohesive look that's interesting, but not overdone with contrast, not too minimalist as in two colors, but not complicated to put together outfits each day. So here's my take on how to create a look that's interesting with when the preferred style uniform is bottom and top and nothing more, which is me, basically. First of all, I'd like to throw out there that it's possible to use texture as contrast instead of color. Yes. And and we said it for summers, but it's something everybody can remember. And I get it. I, I'm the same way. Top, bottom, done, out the door. Mm -hmm. But I also know if I just put in some earrings or a necklace right away, I can see it is better. Oh, oh yes. And... You know, you have to force yourself to do something new. But if I do it for a week, I will miss it on the days that I don't. Jewelry, I'm willing to do. So you, you kind of got to find that thing you're willing to do. I'm happy to shop for it. It's not expensive what I buy, but I have all kinds of different shapes, you know. And so maybe it's repetitively silver. But for me, I took one extra step that just became a habit. Yes, it's an interesting experiment. Do it for a week and then see if it sticks. <laughs> Yeah. And another thing, um, one of my favorite things is shoes. Everyone wears shoes. So if you curate a collection of interesting footwear, it's really, really easy to spice up those bottom and top outfits with it. Yeah, right. You're doing it anyways. You're buying it anyways. You're you're going to wear them. So have a selection of things to just slip on and th they'll always go with your palette, but they add different energy. Another thought might be to pick uh, an exciting necklace or a scarf or some other accessory that you like but can often be overlooked, a statement watch. Almost everybody wears a watch. It's like Joran's very good point to everybody wears shoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And picking one that says something about your style type, well, it doubles as an interesting accessory and gives bonus points. If you don't wear a watch, a phone case, something you're doing anyway. Yeah, I agree. And accept that bottom and top is what you prefer to use. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But choose really, really hot items, like we said about the shoes. You have to wear clothes, so, so choose the best cut in trousers, the most interesting material in sweater, blouse, or top. And if you prefer to use only those two elements, just make them count. Yep. Same with the summer look that she finds it difficult to make it exciting because it consists of so few items. If the items are of good quality and in colors that suit her well, I think that's good enough. Yes, precisely. A soft season outfit of a simple linen dress in a soft mauve, white canvas shoes, a pair of simple pewter earrings with some kind of crystal and a straw yellow basket handbag. I think that sounds smashing. I absolutely agree. Thank you to the reader for sending in this question. I enjoyed this whole episode because it asked us to think about, well, what do we see when color isn't available? What's possible without it? Yes, and we do love a challenge. So, dear listeners, thank you so much for being with us and listening to us once again. We will be back with another episode after the summer. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone.